All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the last and final impairment, and that is goodwill. So we're gonna look at goodwill, and we're gonna look at reviewing it for impairment of the intangible asset, and if there is an impairment, then we're gonna book that impairment loss. Now to review what we already know about goodwill, we're gonna do a fair value of reporting unit test, so we're gonna test the reporting unit, and if it fails that, we're going to do a fair value of implied goodwill test, and that's when we're gonna find out how much did goodwill become impaired. So, to get us started, I'm gonna give you the example. We've got all the numbers up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and read the example that is on the bottom of your screen. So assume in 2012, Black River Entertainment purchased Sony Records and booked a $35 million goodwill. $35 million goodwill, okay? It was, uh, as of 2016, their net assets were $45 million. Well, $45 million net assets. So in 2016, their net assets are now $45 million, okay? Um, it was determined that the fair value of Sony Records was actually 40 million. So we have it on our books for 45, but it is really worth $40 in the market. So if we were to try to sell Sony Records, it'd be worth $40 million instead of our book value of 45. How do we get book value? We take the net assets. How do we take the net assets? We add up all of our assets and we subtract it from our liabilities, okay? So in this case, $45 million, okay? So here's the trial, that's the trial balance. So now we need to do the test. Now for the first test, we know that we're gonna take the fair value of the reporting unit. So if the fair value of the reporting unit is greater than the current value or the car sorry carrying value of the report reporting unit, then there's no impairment. Why? Because we could just merely just sell Sony and we would make um, whatever the fair difference between fair value and uh, carrying value, which means it's worth more than it is carrying, okay? Uh, then, if the fair value is less than the carrying value, what we're carrying the reporting unit, in this case Sony on our books, then there is possibly an impairment. And if that's the case, we'll go on to the next um, test. So let's look at this. Fair value is $40 million. Okay, and carrying value is 45 million. Notice that the carrying value is more than the fair value, therefore there is a possible impairment, okay? So with the possible impairment, then we go on to the implied goodwill test. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to try to figure out, based on this fair value number, what goodwill would be, okay? So what goodwill would be? That would give us what we call the implied goodwill. Okay, so let's say we were buying Sony, okay? If we're buying Sony, what are we gonna buy? Well, we're gonna buy their cash, and I know it sounds weird because we're gonna pay them 40 million in cash and they're gonna give us back one million. So really, we could just pay them 39 and they can hold their cash. But in this case, we're gonna buy their cash, we're gonna buy their AR, we're gonna buy their inventory, we're gonna buy their PP&E, we're gonna buy their royalty contract. We're not gonna buy Goodwill. The reason why we're not gonna buy Goodwill is because Goodwill is the old owner's Goodwill. That doesn't mean it's worth our Goodwill. So we're gonna leave that off the table and then we're buying the royalties payable. So what are their net assets? Well, their net assets excluding Goodwill is $10 million, okay? Now, you can calculate it two ways. The first way you can purely just get the net assets, subtract 35,000, that gets you 10 or you can add up this, that's 16, and that's six, so 16 minus six is 10 million, okay? That's the, in, so that's what we're buying, okay? If we remember that uh, when we're trying to buy a corporation, we're buying their net assets, and so these are their net assets, okay? $10 million. And so what we do is now we compare the, so now we gotta figure out goodwill. Well, if I paid 40 million for it, and their net assets is 10, then we would imply that Goodwill is $30 million. How do we get 30? 40 million minus 10 million equals 30. So if we were to actually buy this, buy Sony now at $40 million, 
we're only getting $10, 000, $10 million dollars of pretty much assets, okay? 16 minus six is 10. So we're gonna pay basically $30 million over its net assets. Because we're paying 30 million over its net assets, we pretty much have goodwill, $30 million of goodwill. So our implied goodwill is $30 million. That's how we calculate implied goodwill. So let's now put it in this kind of type of equation. We have implied goodwill of 30 million. We have actual goodwill of 35. 35 is bigger than 30, okay? So what do we have here? The implied goodwill is worth less than the book goodwill. So we have an impairment, book the loss. The loss is the difference between book and implied, $5 million, okay? And so we would debit, um, you could probably debit loss on goodwill, credit, goodwill, okay? So let me walk you through this one more time just so that you can kind of get an idea. Um, we first need to do the fair value of the reporting unit. So we take the fair value of the reporting unit, in this case, um, $40 million, okay? And we compare it to our book, ver uh, fair, uh, book value of the company, or the net assets. So the net assets book value is 45, okay? So notice 40, 45, because 40 is less than 45, there may be an impairment, okay? Now, the reason why it may be impairments, we need to look at goodwill. Now, typically at this point, you're gonna have an impairment if you fail that test. So, what we do is we take their net assets that we would buy. If we were actually selling this Sony to someone else, that someone else would be buying what? They'd be buying all of this and this. They're not buying another goodwill, okay? So, 16 minus six gets us $10 million. Well, if they're gonna pay us 40 million for it, they're getting $10 million worth of net assets, that would say that their implied goodwill is $30 million, okay? So we take the implied goodwill, we compare it with our book goodwill. Book goodwill is right here, it's given. Book goodwill, and we get a $5 million difference. Notice that the book goodwill is greater than the implied goodwill, therefore an impairment happens, so we're gonna book a loss, okay? That loss is $5 million. Okay, so in the last three lessons, we talked about intangible assets, and in particular, how do we test for impairment? We looked at limited life intangibles, so those intangibles that have a limited life. We also talked about intangibles that have indefinite life, indefinite life meaning that um, theoretically the, the value of that asset um, we would get from it is forever, okay, and then we would then we lastly talked about in this lesson, goodwill and reviewing goodwill for impairment and then calculating the impairment loss. So hopefully you learned a little bit about impairment and hopefully you understand how we calculate both impairment loss and how do we evaluate intangibles for impairment.